Hi, this is Frode and welcome back to Actualize Notes TV. Today you'll learn how to improve your meaning, interactions and energy by taking the small correct actions that are also important for tomorrow and every day after. And if you see anything I could have done better in this video, please give me some feedback, I would highly appreciate it. Today's big ideas come from the great book Are You Fully Charged? by Tom Rath. Are You Fully Charged? Subtitle, The Three Keys to Energizing Your Work and Life. Tom Rath is one of my favorite authors. He's also written the book Eat, Move, Sleep, which I covered a few months ago. He is a researcher on the role of human behavior on business, health, and well-being. He's also the New York Times best-selling writer of five books, which has sold of over six million copies around the world. Truly an amazing person. And in this book, he teaches us how we can get fully charged by embodying the three keys to energizing our work and life. So if you're into that, I think you'll love the book. And uh, it was a concise and practical and quick reading book, so I highly enjoyed it. Now let's get started with our first big idea. M-I-E. Tom and his uh, research team has uh, done a ton of research to find out what really makes the difference in people's quality of life, what gives them a full charge. So they cataloged over 2,600 ideas for daily actions people could take to improve their well-being. And what they found out was that there are three core factors which differentiate this when you have a full charge and when you don't. And those are MIE, which stands for meaning, interactions, and energy. So you have a meaning, which um, is something you do that benefits another person. You have interactions, which uh, means having far more positive than negative experiences. And you have energy, which is taking the daily right choices to improve your health. And it all starts, by improving these areas, all starts with a small daily right actions we take. So how are you feeling on these, of these, uh, these areas, meaning, interactions and energy? Think about that as we go on to more practical ideas. And the next big idea is NSI. Thomas found out that you create meaning in your life when your strengths and interests match the world's needs. And these, and he presents a model so we have three circles, which intersects each other. So in the first circle, you have strengths, what you're good at. Then you have the second circle, your interests, what you want to do. And then you have the needs of the world and the people around you. And in the intersection between them, you, can ha you find meaning in your life. And uh, in his book, Born for This, Chris Gilbock also talks about a similar idea. He uh, presents the model of joy, money, flow. So you have something that gives you joy, something that um, you love doing, then you have something you can get paid to do, money, and that intersects with what gives you flow, what you can be truly great at. And that, in the intersection between them, is the work you are born to do. And uh, Tom stresses the point that we need to start with seeing the needs of the world and then match our strengths and interests, not the other way around, because that would be the passion mindset that Cal Newport talks about in So Good They Can't Ignore You. I'm just so passionate about this, I have to pursue it, not thinking about what the world actually needs. Because we don't want to be like a business who invests millions of dollars in a product that nobody has any demand for. That would be just like investing thousands of hours and dollars in improving our skills and interests, when there's actually no need for those skills and interests. And Tom says that the people who truly make a profound impact is not the people who ask, what can I get from the world? Passion mindset. But what can I give? to the world. So think about this right now. What is a specific need, some problem or issue that you can solve? 
For example, somebody might need a graphic designer, a blogger or whatever, technician in some company. And what are your strengths that can productively satisfy that need? Maybe have, you have good technical skills, you are good at designing things. And then, what are your interests? Do those also intersect with those needs and strengths? Maybe you are interested in helping people change their lives through beautiful colors and art. It could be whatever. Just think about that as we go on to the next big idea. 1200, 19,200, 500 million. Thomas found out that uh, we, um, life consists of uh, millions of individual interactions with other people. And uh, they would either give us a positive charge or a negative charge. And these interactions and daily actions we take will uh, impact and shape our weeks, months, years, decades, and our overall life. And if you think about uh, the actions and moments we have, the interactions we have as three second windows, we have 1200 moments in an hour, 19,200 moments in a day, and 500 million, roughly moments in a lifetime. Just think about that. 500 million. And uh, the, uh, Tom says that the frequency of these good experiences is much more important for our happiness than the intensity of them. It's much better to have a dozen mildly positive experiences throughout your day than one single truly amazing thing happen. But it's so easy to take these small moments for granted these interactions with people, the actions we take, and these moments. But simply brief things like um, giving a brief uh, smile or exchange with a stranger can help you. I uh, have a personal example of this. Right outside where I live, there is a lot of construction work going on right now. And uh, one day when I was going on my walk, I could see a construction worker standing on the roof and staring at me. So uh, I, um, I figured out I wanted to try uh, and do something, and uh, therefore I just waved at him. And when I saw him wave back, it was just an incredible feeling. It gave me a full charge for about an hour after that. It felt, <laughs> it felt so great to have a small positive interactions with another human being. So why not make the commitment right now to make, give a positive spin on each of the interactions you have? This works well when you are meeting strangers on the street. Alright, our next big idea is decisions. Energy. Tom wants us to make the connection between how our daily decisions affect our daily energy levels. Specifically in the areas of how we eat, move, and sleep. Which again is another title of his book. And I give a link to it in the video. So, it's much more motivating to think about how the eating good and moving and sleeping now improves your well-being and how you feel right now, instead of how well uh, your body will look in six months or how you will feel in three months. You need to make the connection between what you choose to do right now, how, what you choose to eat, how you choose to move and how you need to sleep. Because if you have a bad night of sleep, it's most likely that you'll also eat worse and move less, which again will start a negative cycle of having a worse light night of sleep and just creating a downward spiral. I certainly notice that when I don't get my 8 plus hours of sleep each night, I get groggy and grumpy. I'm not at my highest potential. And therefore, think about how you're doing on this, in how you're eating, moving and sleeping, have you made the connection between how your decisions impact your energy levels, Get clear on that and make the necessary, adju necessary adjustments. Alright, our last big idea, a cool, really cool one, is iPhone effect. Tom says that there are dozens of distractions around us, and uh, these can be quite helpful. For example, when you stand in line, it's good to have your iPhone with you so you can learn something or um, text a friend. But these things, these distractions and devices, become problems when we are with other people. because. The 
the truly one thing that will give the most value to our lives is our close social relationships. And therefore we need to focus completely on the other person when we are with them. And it's just a fascinating experiment. People are brought into a lab or something, and they are told to have conversations. And then they um, ask one person to hold an iPhone or leave it on the table. And they didn't notice that the quality of the interactions decrease when they have the iPhone in their hand or on the table. And the, the subjects, experiment subjects themselves say that when uh, they can see an iPhone or the other person visible, it decreases the quality of their, their conversation compared to when the iPhone is away. They report lower empathetic connection with the other person. Simply seeing an iPhone decreases the quality of your conversations. Having it in flight mode doesn't help. You need to put it out of sight if you want to truly make a connection with the people you love, like your friends, family and co-workers. And if you think about it, you're the one who chose to spend time with the other person. Then you're, it's your choice to show that you either care about the other person by giving him or her your full attention, or that you don't care about them by compulsively checking your phone all the time. So put away your iPhone when you're with other people, as to make the connection between how your decisions moment to moment to moment affect your daily energy levels. And think about how 500 million moments in a lifetime use them well. As you connect your strengths and interests with the needs of the world and get fully charged in your areas of meaning, interest and energy. Inter meaning, interactions and energy. That was a quick look at Are You Fully Charged? by Tom Raff. Now think about how you can apply the idea that jumped out at you in your life starting today. Thanks for watching. Have another awesome day. See ya.